Coming up on Inside the Summit League, a Western Illinois shortstop with a shot at pro softball after she is selected in the National Pro Fast Pitch Draft. A former South Dakota State University pitcher looking forward to his third season in the major leagues with the Minnesota Twins. And college baseball made a switch this year to a flat seam ball. Does it make a difference? Somewhat surprisingly, yes. We will talk with some of the players and the coaches about that change. Welcome to the show. Some good baseball stuff coming up. Uh, but first, an impressive ranking for one Summit League track and field team. The North Dakota State University women are ranked number one in the Midwest region rankings this week. It's the first time in school history for the Bison. The Midwest region includes all of the outdoor programs in Division I in the Dakotas and seven other states, Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma, all of those Big Ten and Big 12 programs, and the Bison lead them all this week in women's track. Now the Summer League Outdoor Championships are coming up in mid-May, hosted by Western Illinois. Uh, one of the outstanding individuals from the Indoor Championships is in this week's campus spotlight. Ty Vasky Lewin has made his way from Montego Bay, Jamaica to Vermilion, South Dakota to become one of the best in the Summit League in his sport. Tavaski Loon, a junior transfer from Montego Bay, Jamaica, has found his home on the track at the University of South Dakota. Lewin, who did not know anything about South Dakota, made the quick decision to come to USD after being recruited by Coach Lucky Hubert. Even with the culture change, Lewin says he feels at home. After getting here, I mean, the environment, my um, teammates, you know, the coaches, they're like family. So, you know, I was comfortable here and, you know, it was the best choice for me. Lewin has found success in hurdles by being the first Coyote male to earn Division I All-America honors by placing 8th in the 60-meter hurdles at the NCAA Indoor Championship Meet in Arkansas. He also earned Summit League honors as the Track Championship MVP and Indoor Track Athlete of the Year. Through all these accomplishments, Lewin says there was one major adjustment. The weather is, um, it's usually like 80s in Jamaica and like it's, it's hard for me. That was the hardest part of being here as a Jamaican, like adjusting to this, this weather. Like, you know, it's really cold here and we don't get much time outdoors to practice. Even though the trip to South Dakota from Jamaica is just over 2,200 miles, Lewin is not the only Jamaican athlete at USD. Gawain Williams and Shawnee Canigan are also Coyote track and field athletes. Williams attended Lewin's high school. I try to guide them, you know, like, because it gets tough for them sometimes. And uh, me being here before they, they came here, um, it's, I pretty much have to mentor them, tell them, like, look, you know, you got to do what you came here to do. It's, it, it, it gets tough, you know, it's college, you're doing track. It's not easy. It's not easy being a student athlete, but, you know, it's just me guiding them. Lewin holds the school record for indoor 60 meter hurdles with a time of 7.77 seconds which was set in the preliminaries at the NCAA championships. Lewin finished in 8th place overall which he says is one of his best accomplishments. 8th at nationals is one of the, the most amazing things I've experienced in my whole track career. Um, I've been winning races and being runner-ups all season and then like none of those accomplishments always um, being eight at nationals because it's it's competing against the best you know the best out of everybody in this nation. In addition to the school record for the indoor 60 hurdles, Lewin has the second best time in school history in the 110 hurdles outdoors and the fifth fastest time in the 200 both indoors and outdoors. Lewin is redshirting the 2015 outdoor season and is currently training to make the Jamaican World Championship team. His goal is to run at the Jamaican Olympic Trials in 2016 and hopes to qualify for the Rio de Janeiro Games. For Inside the Summit League, I'm Nicole Griffith.
Up next, it is opening week in Major League Baseball with some former Summit Leaguers to keep an eye on, including South Dakota State's Caleb Thielbar. His story next. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back now to baseball. There are three former Summit League pitchers to keep an eye on as the Major League season gets going this week. Dallas Beeler from Oral Roberts. He is in his second season with the Chicago Cubs, but he is starting the season on this, uh, the disabled list right now. There is Blake Trinan from South Dakota State. He is in his second season with the Washington Nationals. Appeared in 15 games last year. He is on the roster. He's in the bullpen for the Nationals going into the season. And there is another former South Dakota State guy, Caleb Thielbar. He has pitched the last year and a half with the Minnesota Twins, but is starting this year with the Twins AAA team in Rochester, New York. And we talked with Thielbar the day after he was sent down, and hopefully for him, just temporarily. Uh, I guess spring training hasn't, hasn't exactly gone great for me individually. I mean, I'm getting a lot of ground balls, and they just seem to be finding holes everywhere. But, I mean, that, that, that kind of thing, that balances out, though, over the course of the season. So, I mean, maybe, maybe getting a little bit of... A bad luck right now, but from a team perspective, I think we're we're looking pretty good. I mean, I, obviously our offense was pretty good last year, and haven't really lost anyone from that. We've we've uh, gained, if anything, so uh, they're looking pretty good. So we just need to hit the ball a little bit better than we have in the last couple of years, and I think we're gonna we'll, win, we'll definitely win a few more games this year. Well, even if he does have to wait a while to work his way back up to the bigs, it won't be the first time Thielbar has had to take the long way around. He was drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers when he came out of South Dakota State in 2009, but did not catch on right away. He was let go in 2011 and ended up a year later playing independent baseball in his home state of Minnesota with the St. Paul Saints. With the Saints, I was able to, I was able to learn a lot from a lot of different guys. Um, we, had, we had a lot of guys with some major league experience on that team. Um, some hitters, some guys that I picked the brain of. And, you know, they were able to help me out a lot. They, they really were really open to helping out, too. So, Well, success with the Saints got Thielbar a shot with the Minnesota Twins. He worked his way through their minor league system and made his major league debut in 2013. In the last season and a half, he has pitched in 103 games for the Twins. Well, prior to spring training this year, Theobar spent a lot of time back in Brookings, taking advantage of some of the new facilities at South Dakota State. I guess with the, with the new facility up at SDSU, I was able to play a lot of long toss, try to get the arm strength back. Um, and I guess as far as mechanics go and everything, I was just trying to trying to get the ball down in the zone a little bit better than I've ever done before. And I feel like I've accomplished it. So um, looking forward to a pretty good year here, and we'll see how it goes i got to make the team, and if I do, then we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. But, I mean, kind of, I would, I would expect, if, if I'm around, to be in kind of a similar situation as the last couple of years as far as, you know, facing some, facing some lefties a little bit later in the game, sixth, seventh inning type of thing. Theobar credits the coaches and the opportunity that he had at South Dakota State as big factors in his success. Just the focus and the training and the chance to work at it every day and to play against some pretty good Summit League competition. And he is a very proud South Dakota State alum. Absolutely. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big Jack Out fan. I mean, not just baseball, but all the different sports. I mean, I tried to go to as many games as I could this fall and winter. I guess living in Brooklyn now, so. Um, yeah, and I'm, and I'm around the school all the time. I'm around the team a lot in the offseason, so it's a, it's fun to be able to you know, talk with those guys and then watch them hopefully have success all spring. Up next, some of the teams and all other college teams are playing with a different baseball this season. Do flatter seams really make a big difference? Find out next. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. 
Welcome back. Well, defense may win championships, but nobody likes defense. It's boring. It stops the offense, and that's what everybody wants. Offense, more touchdowns and dunks and home runs. And the NCAA wanted to get more offense into college baseball this year, so they changed the baseball, went to one with flatter seams. And as a result, home runs and runs scored are up. But don't feel too sorry for summer league pitchers because both the batters and the pitchers have been able to take advantage of this change. Well, I think if you hit it just right, it's going to go further. And the test results will tell you that it'll go 20, 25 feet further if you really square it up and, and hit it right on the sweet spot. But overall, I, I think it'll be very similar. Um, I, I think you'll probably see home runs a little bit more where a guy catches it just right. Instead of that double, you'll get a home run out of it. Uh, so a little bit of a scoring increase, but I don't think anything over the top. They just came out with this, the numbers, uh, collegiate baseball, just had it. Uh, home runs are up 30 percent. Uh, strikeouts are up 11 percent, and um, I think batting average is up 10 percent. Maybe not not that high, but with home runs and strikeouts are, are up. So it is having a, I think the impact that, that the NCAA wanted it and us as coaches wanted it because it brought some offense back. The tighter seam ball, it's a minor league ball. It's it's a harder ball. So when when you square it up, it goes further. And we've seen that across the country. The power numbers are not where they once were, but they are up. Uh, but at the same time, uh, which we originally moved to this ball to get more offense in the game, it's also made our pitchers better. Back to the you know the tighter spins on breaking balls and tighter, better, sharper stuff. And the strikeouts are up. Well, that is the flip side of the story. Pitchers have been able to adapt and use the characteristics of the lower seam ball to their advantage. It's a little tighter spin for breaking balls and it comes off the hand a little cleaner for fastballs in general. I got you, so do you feel like it puts you at a disadvantage having less of a seam to work with? I actually, no, I actually like it a little bit more. Some people don't. Uh, I know a couple of our relievers don't like the breaking ball, uh, the way it comes off our hand, but uh, for me, actually throwing submarine, I actually kind of like it a little more. It comes off the hand a little cleaner. And it's still about making pitches. Um, that, that's baseball, so it's still about making good pitches. When you make good pitches, you'll probably get the guy out. The, the pitcher still has the advantage, but that's that's been baseball forever. Uh, the pitchers always had the advantage, um, you know. So, but now it's it's swinging back to where if a guy makes a bad pitch and you, you hit it, it's going to go. So, so whether using the new ball has been a good change remains to be seen. But it seems to be at least a change that can be equally exploited by good players on both sides of the ball, depending on whether or not you make a good pitch or take a good swing. You know, with the old balls, pitchers were rewarded for making bad pitches because guys would, would crush balls that would run out of gas at the end of it. And now you see the jump back to the baseball where it carries at the end. So you should get rewarded. If you put a good swing on a, on a, on a bad pitch, you should get rewarded for that. So um, it's nice that hitters are getting rewarded again for for hitting and, and having good approaches. Because again, you want those guys to have confidence too. And I think it's a fair option between what we had before and what we have now. It's the fair of the two because I think it rewards everybody. It rewards good pitching, but also rewards good hitting. Up next, your baseball players of the week and the highlight rundown, including league leading Oral Roberts at South Dakota State. Inside the Summit League, on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Oral Roberts is back in the Summit League this year, and its baseball team is back at the top of the league standings. Here are the baseball highlights of the week, including the Golden Eagles taking two out of three at South Dakota State. Started off with North Dakota State at Fort Wayne in game one of this series. And how about some defense? Kendall Whitman at first base. Snags that, takes a hit away, driving down the line to rob Danny Reagan. And this was a close ball game, goes extra innings. North Dakota State gets a run in the eighth inning on a blooper by JT Core. He had three hits in the game, a couple of RBI. So it's tied 3-3 in the 11th inning. Greg Kaiser at bat for the Mastodons, triples off the wall in right field. He would later score on a sacrifice fly by Jonathan Reese. And the Dons win uh, game one, 4-3 in 11 innings. They take game two as well, 8 to nothing. Greg Kaiser, 3-4 for four with a home run in that one. North Dakota State comes back with 18 runs on Sunday to avoid the sweep. Braden Resch, 3-6, three 3 RBI in that one for North Dakota State. In Brookings, Oral Roberts and South Dakota State 
And Oral Roberts won the first game 5-3. Jackrabbits looking to bounce back here in game two. But Oral Roberts wasting no time getting on the scoreboard. Matt Watley leads off the game with a solo home run. And then two batters later, Matt Brandy goes deep to left. And the Eagles are up 2 to nothing early. But Al Robbins had himself a day for the Jackrabbits. Four for five, drives in three runs. Robbins with a walk-off RBI single. And South Dakota State wins game two of this series, 8 to 7. Oral Roberts would go on to win game three, 9 to 2. Darian James leads the way in that one, three for five with a home run. And four runs batted in for Oral Roberts. And in Omaha, Western Illinois taking on the Mavericks. They split the first two games. Pick it up in game three, and some defense from the Leathernecks. Chris Tashita going to his left, spins, got him. And then Omaha doing some defense as well. Zach Williamson, a couple of runners on, but he gets the pitcher's best friend, 5-4-3, to get him out of the inning. And then the Mavericks break it open in the fifth inning. They score seven runs. Colin Life executes the hit and run perfectly, doubles, and brings in Daniel Jewett and Justin Threlkeld. And the Mavs win game three, 17-8 to take two out of three. Well, here are your baseball players of the week, and we'll be right back with softball. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Now to the week in softball, and a Summit League player has been picked to play in the pros. Sammy Marshall of Western Illinois was taken by the Chicago Bandits of the National Pro Fast Pitch League in the senior draft last week. Marshall was the 18th pick overall and the first Summit League player taken since 1997. And she will join the Bandits after the Summit League season. The National Pro League starts its season in late May. Western did not have any league games this week, but here are the rest of the highlights, starting with the Mavericks and the Jackrabbits. Omaha at South Dakota State in game one of this three-game set in Brookings. Pick things up in the third inning. 5-1 to one, Omaha already. Jaylee Heinrichs in the circle, strikes out 10 in the ball game for the Mavericks. She goes the distance. Ashlyn Bender pitching for the Jackrabbits, getting some help out in center field from Jessica Markanich, laying out to make a nice play there, but... Nobody going to get to this one as Kelly Patterson singles to center. Ali Mathewson will come in and score. And Omaha out to a 6-1 to one lead in the fourth inning. Patterson would come around to score a little bit later on a single by Tanya Peterson. Peterson drives in four in the ballgame. That makes it 7-1. to one. Uh, Patterson scored four times for the Mavericks. Jackrabbits do get one back in the fifth inning. Devin Larson had a big game for South Dakota State. Uh, her eighth home run of the season, she drives in five runs, and the Jackrabbits hit three home runs in the ballgame, but the Mavericks uh, outslug them. Campbell Ditto with a home run here for Omaha, her seventh of the season, and Omaha wins game one of the series 13-7 on the Jackrabbits' home field. South Dakota State would come back, get a split in the doubleheader. They win game two, 9-6. So they head to game three on Sunday. Jaylee Heinrichs in game three here. Pitching again for the Mavs. Strikes out Chavez to get out of a little bit of a jam in the second inning. Allie Mathewson, big game in this one for Omaha. She led off the game with a single. Leads off the third inning here with a home run. And that gets uh, Omaha going. The Mavs will get another run in the third inning. Coming up on a single by Megan May and... Omaha out to a 2 to nothing lead. Tanya Peterson sliding in to score there. Jackrabbits come back in the fourth inning. Big game for Jordan Sturgeon. She gone. That's her second home run of the year with a runner on. That ties the ball game at 2-2 in the fourth inning. And the Jacks keep pouring it on in the fifth inning. Alyssa D'Agostino. Hard single to left center. She goes four for four in the ball game. Drives in five runs for the Jackrabbits. That scores two. And the Jackrabbits will take the lead in this uh, third game and not look back. SDSU puts up six in the sixth inning. And South Coast State wins game three, 10 to two, to take two out of three from Omaha. Meanwhile, in Fargo, South Dakota taking on North Dakota State. Game one here, Krista Menke pitching for the Bison. USD got her for two runs in the first inning on a home run by Allie Daly, but 
Menke goes uh, all seven innings, strikes out 12. She's got 160 more strikeouts than anybody else in the league right now. Alex Sobrero for the Bison goes two for four, a double to lead off the bottom of the first. And then she would score on a wild pitch. It's an error on the catcher for the Coyotes, and Sobrero sliding in. It's 2-1, to one, South Dakota with the lead after one inning. But Sobrero at it again in the second inning. Knocks in Jackie Stifter with an RBI single. The Bison get two runs in the second. They take a 3-2 to two lead. And then Logan Moreland in the fourth. That is gone to deep left center. Cheyenne Garcia followed up uh, with a home run of her own, and the Bison win game one, 9 to 2 on a one-hitter by Krista Menke. Game two, Coyotes would come back in this one. Allie Daly doing it again. She goes two for three in the game. That single scores Katie Dinning, and South Dakota's up one to nothing early. Then in the third inning, two on for Morgan Hancock, and that is gone. Three-run shot for Hancock, and the Yotes hang on to win game two by a score of four to two. Madison Frayne uh, pitching for South Dakota allows just four hits in this game to get the win for USD. So the rubber match, game three on Saturday. And more long ball from the Coyotes, at least one of them anyway. Yvonne Minogue, she is batting 430. That is top five in the Summit League right now. Solo shot to lead off the game for South Dakota. But Menke comes back at seven more strikeouts. Uh, she gets her 21st win of the season. That is tops in the league. North Dakota State up 3-1 in the third inning. Amanda Grable with a solo home run. Cheyenne Garcia homered again for the Bison, and they come back win game three, 4-1. to one. North Dakota State is 7-2 now in Summit League play. Well, here are your Summit League softball players of the week. Ali Mosier cranking out home runs at IUPUI. Krista Menke mowing them down at North Dakota State. We'll see you next week on Inside the Summit League.